Hop it in, hello. My name is Kelly Bloss, and this is my channel, Dynabytes International. This is part two in my five part series of mango recipes. Today, we're making mango pie. A mango pie is something that once you have it, you will crave all year round. Forget mango season. But this is the best time to have it. You can use store-bought crust, but as I've come to realize, made at home is the best, especially when it's a really good pie dough recipe. So the first thing I'm gonna do before I begin making my pie crust is cube my butter and then stick it in the freezer until I'm ready to use it. In the bowl of your food processor, add your flour, sugar, and kosher salt. Once you have your dry ingredients in the food processor, go ahead and pulse that a couple times to get it to mix really well. Then you're gonna grab your butter out of the freezer and add it directly to the flour and turn that on. Once I've achieved the sand-like consistency, I turned off my food processor and grabbed my tablespoon to add water. Once I was ready to add the water, I turned my food processor back on and slowly added three tablespoons of ice cold water. It started with three tablespoons, but you may need more. But once you reach three tablespoons, you're going to add the next tablespoon very slowly. And what we're trying to aim for is that ball of dough to just come together, not completely form a ball, just come together. It will still have some like sand-like remnants around it, but once most of it forms into that, comes together, stop processing and stop adding water. Once my pie crust came together, I turned the dough out onto a parchment paper to help me form the dough. The dough does need to be worked a little bit just because it needs to come together until it's kind of a solid, um, one solid piece. What we want to avoid when making this pie crust is having it stick to the surface that you're working on or sticking to your hand or warming the butter too much because we want to have a flaky buttery crust in the end. And if we work the dough too much, we're gonna get a rubbery consistency and that's not what we're aiming for. So pay attention to what you're doing. If you can, use a pie mat or a parchment paper to kind of fold and work your dough until it really forms one solid piece. And once you get to that consistency, go ahead and wrap that in plastic wrap and put it in your refrigerator for one hour. After being in the refrigerator for an hour, the dough will probably need to sit for about 15 minutes on the counter space before you start working the dough. It will become really hard, so if you try to roll out your dough right out of the refrigerator, you're probably gonna get a lot of cracking. But if it does crack, it's not a big deal. You can easily pinch it together as you can see me doing. If you don't have a pie measuring mat like me, keep your pie mold nearby. As you're rolling out the dough, you want to use your pie mold to measure how much you're rolling out. You'll need an inch around the edge of your pie mold to ensure that you have the right size dough. Once I reach the desired size for my pie crust, we want to preserve the quality of the pie crust, so use your rolling pin to transfer the dough. Once you get the dough over the pie mold, don't stretch the dough. You'll want to lift the side of it and then tuck it into the edge until you get rid of all the pockets all around the edge, pushing the, not stretching, but pushing the pie mold up against the edges. And you're gonna need to adjust the pie crust with your both hands so that it fits perfectly. Once your pie crust is fitted in the pie mold, you'll want to use some scissors to cut off the edges. You can leave your pie crust as it is with a flat edge. That looks really nice and neat, very modern. But I wanted to get a little fancy and make mine kind of look like a flower, so I used that three, three finger pinch um, on the pie crust edge. And it really turned out pretty. Before putting your pie crust in the freezer, poke holes on the bottom of the pie crust. This will help to prevent any air pockets from forming while pre-baking the pie crust. Once I was finished forming my pie crust in the pie mold, I put it in the freezer for 30 minutes. Once I put my pie crust in the freezer, 
I began working on my mango filling. This pie has two fillings. It has a mango layer and a cheesecake layer. So the mango layer, I began cutting and peeling my mango into half inch cubes. The best mangoes for these recipes are gonna be a champagne mango or a Philippine mango. They're really nice, sweet and tart, and they don't have a lot of fibers in it. So it's really great for baking. To assemble the mango filling, all you need to do is add all of the ingredients into one bowl and mix it really well, and then place it on the side until we're ready to use it. To make the cheesecake filling, first I whipped my cream cheese until it was really smooth. After whipping my cream cheese, then I add my sugar. Next, I added my vanilla paste. Once my cream cheese, sugar, and vanilla paste were well mixed, I added my eggs. Making sure to combine all my ingredients really well, I want a very smooth and silky consistency. I covered the pie crust with the parchment paper and then I added the pie weights. And you do have to shift the parchment paper around a little bit just so that you get the pie weights all up against the sides of the pie crust. Then we're gonna pre-bake our pie crust. We'll put it in the oven at 425 degrees with the pie weights inside of it. Egg and the heavy cream will be used as a glaze to put over the pie crust so that we get a nice shiny golden crust. Once you remove your pie crust from the oven, remove the weights. Then I brushed down my pie crust with the glaze I made from the egg and heavy cream. This glaze will create a protective layer between the crust and the filling, preventing the crust from becoming soggy. It will also allow the crust to have a nice golden shiny hue. Because this pie will be cooking for a long time, I needed to create some kind of protective ring for the edges of the pie crust so that it didn't burn and get bitter. So I used a really long piece of foil. I measured it against the side of the pie mold and then I combined the two edges together forming a ring and crumpled it all the way around so that it would stick. Now this particular ring of foil, I actually keep and use over and over again. Attach it really well and kind of fold it without touching the foil to the sides of the crust. We're 
going to cover it and protect the edges of the pie crust. Once you bake the pie crust for another 15 minutes, remove the pie crust from the oven. Reduce your oven temperature to 375 degrees Fahrenheit and add your mango filling to the pie crust. And bake your pie with the mango filling for another 15 minutes at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Then I gently ladled my cheesecake filling on top of the mango layer, taking care not to mix the two layers. Then I put the pie back in the oven for another 35 to 40 minutes at 375 degrees until the cheesecake settled and the top layer achieved a light brown color. Once your pie's done baking, put it on a cooling rack and let it come to room temperature. Once the pie comes to room temperature, then put it in your refrigerator for two to four hours. Even better overnight. You really want your layers to solidify um, before eating it. So this pie is actually made best the night before serving. Before serving, I spread a quarter cup of sour cream over the top of the pie and then sprinkled it lightly with ground nutmeg. Slice and serve. This really is a special pie and so much enjoyable. I really hope that you like it. If you make it, please comment. And if, even better, if you film it and tag me in it, I would love to see the outcome um, and just how much you enjoyed it. I really hope you enjoyed this recipe because this is actually one of my all time favorite dessert recipes. It always hits the spot, it always feels like home. It always makes me feel like I'm on the island, just kind of relaxing, enjoying the day. If you enjoyed this recipe, I hope you'll like, share, and subscribe. And if you want the recipe, I've included the link in the description below.